Welcome to the Green Up Academy podcast with Alex Kirby, where we focus on helping you level up your green industry business. Whether it's marketing, finance, employees, or strategy, we talk about everything on this show to help you apply it to your business and change your family and company's future for decades to come. Here's your host, Alex Kirby. Trey, we are in Claremore, your city of Oklahoma, which I deem as Tulsa, but I'm the same way. I live in Colum- Chapin, South Carolina, and a lot of it's trees. not Columbia, yeah. so everyone who said, there's a lot of trees. Now, now, this is what's crazy about here. I've never been to Oklahoma. I've never been to Arkansas. We've gone to back-to-back days. What is the deal with, like, some lots are super wooded and some are, like, ranch, like, movie cowboy land? Yeah, what's up with that? I don't, I don't know. I, don't I mean, just because I've been born and raised here, I, I'm used to it. But uh, there's a lot of open land. It's really flat, it's except for flat. except for our farm. Yeah, you got. <laughs> yeah, t- you should tell people before we get talking about business. Tell people about your uh, your farm that I got to see. Yeah, so uh, was it hundred acre, hundred plus? It, it was it was 150. Now it's 100. Um, so my my great grandpa was a painter during the Great Depression, and so he was painting houses that banks were like repossessing. Mm-hmm. So he actually made a lot of money during the, the Great Depression, and so he bought you know he bought uh, five hundred acres in in a town called Skyatook, close to here. Okay, does um, he still have that? Yep, yep, I still has that. Your uncle lives there. Uh, so we got cousins that live out there. Dang, dude. So for my so so my great uncle got that property in the hair. Okay. And then Grandpa got the the clamor property. Oh, got so, it, got it. Yeah, so it's got a lot of cool history. Um, it's beautiful. But we out there. Uh, we were born and raised out there. Uh, we were raised coming home from school and hopping on a four wheeler and, and going fishing. Or and, uh, and I was thinking about this when you took me out there. Uh, you were saying how you now you, you were raised on the property and how you own you'll own the property. You actually yeah. own part of it now. Yeah. And you're about to own the rest. Like that's what like movies are made of. Yeah. Like to say you like got your first runny nose and you know scrape knee yeah, out there and now you're gonna have your kids first of that out there little lucy rip, little crazy lucy that's, right. on that's crazy yeah yeah you're <laughs> lucy. um i just i don't know i'm not i'm not even playing i was nerding out thinking about it after you took me there i'm like yeah. dang this is so sick because yeah. my hope i've got t- you know that 10 nine and a half acres whatever i would it's right by the river. I'm trying to figure out how I get a piece of that property that touches the river. Yeah, that'd be sick. Because my that river goes all the way into downtown Columbia. Yeah. So you could like put a kayak in and ride downtown. Yeah, that'd be sick. That'd be so sick. Yeah. But um, so we're here in Tulsa. For anyone listening, Green Up Podcast. This is our new reform landscaping uh, green industry podcast. Where we help you guys level up your business. We just talk about life. We talk about business. We talk about how they work together how they're hard, how uh, they're great, how you can get wealthy and help other people, yeah. how you can get broke real quick. And so today with Trey, Trey and I have been friends. Man, this is like four years probably, Trey. I say four, yeah. Um, we started with you know doing some coaching calls, and then we just became buddies very quick. And then we went to Equip together, all this stuff. But the biggest thing I want to talk about, you've got – um seven-figure business i just sold my seven-figure business i think what's really helpful and that, that doesn't mean we're rock stars by the way there's probably dudes listening to this right now they're like i do four million i should have a podcast hey you probably should yeah <laughs> um we're not gurus we're not you know whatever <clears throat> but we do have a lot we actually have experiences to help other people with yep there's a lot of that i'm not gonna hit i'm not gonna hit on anybody but there is a lot right now in our community i'll say that's the word community of landscapers where there's a lot of people who because they're making money they're saying things so they can make money and they've never done it they've Mm -hmm. never experienced it they've never had to fire somebody that had two kids at home we have yeah they've never had to wonder how they're going to make payroll which payroll's five to ten grand a week because the check for fifty eight thousand hadn't been cleared yet from the bank they haven't done that there's they haven't even had four employees five six and we both have and so i think it's important to talk on this podcast today just about i think i said is uh 
how how hard it was, it is, and hard, how hard it will be. Because I don't think there's a secret. And I'd love to ask you your opinion on it. I think I, I, I don't like saying this, but I really do think there's going to be a recession next year. Um, we really technically were in one this year, like by technical terms, but I've been calling it a regression. It's pretty good, right? Yeah. Uh, we had a regression. Some industries were not great. Some were f- amazing. But next year, I don't, I don't see how we don't. And, and I know you know, I know a nerd out on all this finan- financial analyst stuff. But what has been hard for you this year? So you've had different difficulties in the past. What has been the hardest part of this year? Has it? Yeah, I, I won't even preface the question. Do you have something that pops to your mind? Yeah. So you know, everything that's on our mind all year long is grow, grow, grow. You know, we we started the turf division last year. We've been focusing on marketing and building that up. Yeah, you rebranded your old company the last rebranded months. everything. Yeah, I wanted to get my name out of it. You know, we split the companies. We got the we've got the weed control company on one. And then we've got Perfect Scape, which is going to be replaced Lambert Lawn. Yep. Um, uh, but the biggest thing that's been a challenge for me is, is um, you know, with the rebranding, we're wanting to grow. We're hiring new help. We're paying that new help more than we ever have, mm-hmm. you know, because there is more specialty jobs within that. Now, paying people higher, you have less turnover. Sure. Um, but the I think the most uh, difficult thing this year is with us growing even our maintenance division um, with – with uh, us taking on more commercial work now, more or less than residential on the maintenance side, is building out the system from you know from January to December. Mm-hmm. So within that system, you you, you do your, your your irrigation startups, your winterizations, mm-hmm. your spray, your 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 mowing, your tree trimming, your bush your like your bush trimming, your shrub mm-hmm. oriental trees. What's been hard for me is you know bringing in new guys, um, and spending you know enough time to train them. Um, and I was actually thinking this morning, so I started doing this this year. Um, I've been seeing a lot of guys with bigger multi-million dollar companies that, that so much spend so much time on training. Yeah. Um, for me, you know, being in the green industry for now six years, mm-hmm. I expect people to know and they don't, they don't. So, um, you know, the biggest thing for me was the, the challenge was our growth and then, um, you know, building out the systems to where everything is just automatic. Mm-hmm. Um, what we failed at <coughs> is our training on that. Um, so w- within this year, I've got a, an album on my iPhone. So if I'm driving on the road and say we pass by a uh, McDonald's, mm-hmm. I won't say Brahms because people don't know what Brahms is in half the world. I don't know if you had their ice cream while you've been down here. I had it, but it last year, but I do know it's pretty good. Yeah, and I'll use the lingo. Sure. It slaps. Sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> We're 30, man. Yeah. We're too old to say that. Uh, but, you know, we, we drove That's by hilarious. McDonald's and, and you got like a tree saplings growing out of boxwoods. Yeah. Um, I identify it. New guys probably don't. They don't know. Sure. So what I've been doing is driving. You know, I'll do property checks. I'll drive, take some pictures of it, save it to my phone. Put so that slideshow or something. My plan is to rent out at like the Holiday Inn Express, mm-hmm. rent out the room. conference room, yeah, and build a slideshow. Love that specifically for training. Mm-hmm. And I think I should do it quarterly. Yeah. Um, you know, doing training for, for from from identifying weeds to identifying problems on mowers, identifying, um, and spend, you know, spend a day training. And I think that's been my biggest challenge is you get so much in the hustle and bustle. Like you have a schedule right now. We're insane with Christmas lights. It's our busiest time of the year. Um, but within the hustle and bustle, it's oftentimes forgot the training and the training is so important because you're, you're only as good as your weakest link. You know, me and you play sports. We're deep in the sports. Yeah, Yeah. And, and you and I both know how true that is. You get exposed. You're you like, get that, exposed. The guy you don't want to get the ball in the ninth inning yeah. goes to him every time. Every time. Or if you're in basketball, uh, you got your practice squad. The practice squad's playing against the five starters. Yeah. That's who makes everyone better. You're right. That's true. So, you know, here I've, I've realized, you know, we've, we've missed some things. We've, we've, we've gotten fired on some really big jobs. Um, you know, we've gotten a lot of big jobs. And, like, our expectations next year are going to be completely different this year, I think. Spending more time training. I think that was one of my, you know, I'm in reflection mode as I sold my company 10, 12 weeks ago. And one of my biggest regrets is not listening. I had a manager named Travis who, for from day one, he was like, we got to train once a month, all day. Because um, we had so many new guys, on, you know, all the time, five, four, three, four a month. 
And I just couldn't justify because I was running the four tens models, so I didn't want them coming in on Fridays to train and overtime. And I wish I had thought about how important what we're going to call opportunity cost would cost me. Okay, so I can get all these leads. I can get all these customers, great customers. But if I don't train them, I'll never keep them. So I've lost the opportunity for that customer. Mm -hmm. And so where I was losing, where I thought I was losing money training people, I was actually losing business by not training them. Yeah. Which is the same thing, even worse, because now you've worked so hard to get this 80000 20000 maybe someone's listening, $5,000 account. Mm -hmm. And because you didn't train somebody for four hours or eight hours or whatever. I don't know if you're familiar with this, but have you seen Greenius? Have you heard of Greenius? Uh -uh. So there's, um, we had just implemented it at Trifecta. Um, it's a really cool software, and this is an unpaid ad. People, I just, I want to disclaimer this. I'm not taking a dime for the Green Up Academy. I'm self-funding the whole thing. But Greenius is a cool thing where, the, like, it's the physical landscape training. So where we're building the Green Up Academy for the business training, uh, Greenius is the physical. And so... I uh, just, I like their platform. So you can check that out with your guys and they can like go through because you almost don't want to offend them by training them. You ever felt that way? Yeah. And so I, I remember when I realized that I had failed my company on the training side. I mean, I'm talking like top three things I regret, like looking back, not regret, but I wish I had done differently and listened to my friend or my guy, my manager, who, my manager for years. <clears throat> um, I took out what ended up being our two best crew leaders. I didn't know this. I hired them at the same time. I don't know. I'm going to look at Logan over here. It was probably the beginning of last year, so 2022, like very beginning, maybe even the end of 21. Um, I hired these two guys. One was a manager at a fast food place, and I've been hearing that phrase, and, and people listening, y'all should do this, always hire the best employee at the worst place um, because he wants to improve himself. Mm -hmm. So this guy had been a manager at Sonic for like four years. He applied and he came in nervous. He had never done landscaping. I was like, "Hey, dude, I already know who you are. I've been ri I've been thinking about reaching out to you." So, anyways, hired him and another guy. I took them to my property and put them through a four hour training that I made up. Ended up being the two best crew leaders I had, mm -hmm. and that was after that. I only did four hours: yeah. one hour mowing, one hour weed eating, one hour on just concepts, and then yeah. one hour of physical training with yeah. um, tools. Um. Like random tools, hedge trimmers and stuff, so I could get the handle. Bro, I remember feeling so stupid. Like a month later, when I saw how great they did, I'm like, it only took four to six hours of, for them to like be decent. And then we would then what I did was I went on the job with them for half a day. So that was all I did, and that's not good enough, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm not saying that's enough, but I'm with you a million percent. I, I think that's a huge hard thing is like training guys. Because, man, you're just ble – like, hourly pay, you just feel like you're bleeding money. And, and you're not necessarily, but it's hard and mental yeah. hoop to get through. All right, next thing. <clears throat> what <clears> – <throat> excuse me. What is the hardest thing for you with business outside of business? Let me explain. Is it family? Is it, like, you know, work life – and there's no such thing as work-life balance, but – are you good at turning off when you get home? Are you not? Um, are you good or do you struggle with the financial side at dominating your thoughts at 10 o'clock at night? So one of the things that's not talked about enough is how much owning a lawn and landscape, any business really, but especially a trades business because there's always moving pieces. Like if you work, if you work, uh, if you own a business, I feel like uh, that's like a nine to five business more or less without products and hourly employees like salary people like my mar marketing company for example I, my my brain is a lot more at peace at night because i have a good team it's not equipment everywhere across the freaking county right yeah they used to stress me out was oh, how yeah. much equipment i had and where is it is it working i don't have to worry about my laptop working when i yeah <laughs> you know and so What's your thing? Like, what's the one thing outside of the day to day business that you struggle with, or thinks, or not you struggle with, but what you think is the most difficult? I'll uh, I'll start with uh, the number one thing that helped me out because I struggle with, you know, shutting down. I saw a, a meme the other day on Facebook. It said, um, "If you if if you ever imagine what it's like to be a business owner, or entrepreneur, drink a large Red Bull and sit on the couch." <laughs> 
you know, so and, I, and I, I couldn't agree more um, because, you know, you're always, you always want to say you're at peace, but you're really not. Mm-hmm. Um, me and Alex were both talking yesterday because we're, I'm doing a bunch of real estate stuff that, you know, we're, we try to not to chase the shiny next thing, but for guys like me and him, it's, mm-hmm. it's tough, but you know, we have to make sure we stay straight and narrow. Um, but what's been hard is, you know, in the beginning, the grind, the hustle, Um, a lot of times, you know, I always believe that I wasn't doing anything if I didn't have sweat equity Mm. when the fact of the matter is when you're growing your business, you have to work on your business more than you work in it. Um, so, so that was, that was a big thing for me to realize, like, you know, I just stepping away, working on the business, um, and then realizing that, Hey, I did a lot today. Um, you know, I don't have to go out and do more, um, shutting down at night. Um, I took your advice, you know, four or five years ago when we first connected, uh, you were talking about how two you phones. You leaving. Yep, two phones. So I immediately, um, got another phone, uh, and I've been, uh, I've got my personal and I got my business. Alex is holding two phones. I can see we got, yeah. Phone. So I got my, uh, I got my, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So I got my, my, my old personal. That was my work phone when Cole and I were, were mowing lawns in college mm-hmm. is now the office phone. Yeah. Office phone stays in the office from eight o'clock to 5 PM. And then it stays in the office overnight. No matter, you know, if angry Karen calls at 8 p.m., there's nothing that I can do sure. about it at 8.01. And let's plug the hack. All you got to do is have an awesome voicemail yeah. to, for them not to be mad. But yeah. go ahead. So um, leaving that here, there's nothing more important than being home with your family. You know, I married my wife last year. Um, and then I've only been married one year. Beginning of last year? 20, yeah, yeah. It was 22 or 21? 22. It was. You're yeah, right. And you got yeah. pregnant right after. Yeah. So when we have our baby Lucy, you know, mm-hmm. she's, she's got me wrapped around every finger I have. Um, <laughs> Hopefully only 10. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so, you know, my priorities now are I, I really do whenever I get off work, whether that's five or six, um, I shut her down and, and, and go home. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm unlike, you know, there's, there's a lot of people that work better at night. Alex is one of those. I do. The phone calls me and Alex have had at 1030 at night <laughs> and he's just now like waking, like he's wide awake and I'm like going downhill quick. Um, I'm an early riser. Mm-hmm. So I get a lot of stuff done. You know, I get to the office at, you know, at six, I'll grind out till, till seven at seven, eight. Um, but you know, our guys start at seven. Sure. Um, but you know, shut, shutting down, making sure that you go home. Um, it's people say that, you know, they can do it. I don't think it's, I don't think it's possible to completely what? shut down. Oh yeah. You know, cause I, you, like you said, you got so many wheels turning, mm-hmm. um, but I've done a really good job at it. I've done, that's good. I've done a really good job, and it was it was a long time. You know, the if I can suggest anyone that's just starting out, you know, honestly, it it if you're even a solopreneur, get another phone. Mm-hmm. Start now. Don't start two or three years down the road. Start now. So when you prioritize prioritize your time, yeah, um, you're more productive in those hours. Sure. Uh, you know, I I I listen to Ryan Panetta quite a bit. And, and he's such a good guy. I love that guy. But he talks about, you know, he's got his from from 6 a.m. to 10, or sorry, 6 a.m. to 9. He's really not even, he's not in the office. He's like, he's, he's doing his daily devotion. Working on himself. He's, 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 he's eating healthy, yeah. exercising. And then at 9 o'clock from like 9 or 10 to 3, it's solid business. Booked out for six, seven hours straight, no breaks. And he said like yeah. his regular 8 to 5 day is now optimized in yeah. 4 or 5 hours. All right. Rob Deerdeck is a huge guy on that too, and mm-hmm. he's we can go down the rabbit hole with that. But I want to say, yeah, and then Pineda, not that him, but I, something I want to implement is where I use the last hour of the day as a prep for the next, rather than not a reacting to the day. That's a hard thing to do, though. Prepping for next day, but mm-hmm. um, so that you know, getting another phone, making sure you you prioritize business and your family. Um, it's it's tough. It'll be an ongoing battle, I think, for the, for my whole life because I'm I'm built the way I am, but. Mm-hmm. Um, that was tough really learning how to itemize that, um, prioritizing that, not itemizing. But, right. um, and then, uh, you know, for us, all we're, all we're about is growth, growth, growth. Um, within growth, it takes cash. Mm-hmm. When, you t- when you're growing, it takes cash. I know that, you know, I've, I've read books. Where Especially I now. Especially like, now. It's almost like almost doubled. Mm-hmm. Like what you need cash is, I don't mean to interrupt you, but no, like, you're good. I've been thinking about this for like three days since I've been talking with you and Eric. The inflation problem. Now, in Oklahoma, by the way, we found out, looking over here at Logan, prices are lower. Yeah. 
Okay, you're getting toothpaste for two fifty here. Yeah, four bucks in South Carolina, right? That's yep. a big difference. Logan's white chocolate mocha is a dollar fifty less is. than it is in South Carolina. It is. It's a little espresso, you know, girly flavor stuff, whatever it is. But um, I've never had coffee, so I couldn't even tell you what it's called. But never, never, you've never had a sip of coffee. I had a sip once, maybe twice. All right, that's not, yeah, you've had coffee. Though. I've never <laughs> like been like, you know what? Yeah. Let me take a sip of this thing. I've yeah. never done that. Yeah, I don't know why that was my coffee accent, but it was. Yeah. Um, my wife, we make a joke with the local coffee shop that um, he wrote me a letter that said, thanks for paying off my mortgage. Awesome. Because my wife goes so much. Yeah. But, yeah. S- stuff's cheaper here. I, so much cheaper. And But I'm yeah. saying, like, inflation in the last eight months, like, turn of the year. Dude, you got to have, like, 30%. Like, if you have 70 grand, that was the old 100. Yeah. Like if like you're like I got seventy, but it's like you would have had a hundred. Like yeah. it just is crazy right now. So cash is so important. Yeah, and and you know how big I've been. Um, you know I, we've been a in the in the in the service business growth process. Mm-hmm. You know I've been really good at keeping my debt low. Mm-hmm. Um, I've grown slowly. Mm-hmm. Um, to, to each their own on that. Um, I think for me, it's it's benefiting us now because a lot of are. people listening would think you grew fast. Yeah, that's what's interesting. Yeah, well, we rebranded and we had all these new mm-hmm. trucks. Well, hey, those those trucks were painted by a, uh, um, you know, we've got the Isuzu wraps. You know, we've got a good deal on those. Uh, but all my, you know, twenty five hundred trucks, they're they're all older than twenty ten. Mm-hmm. Um, some two thousand, two thousand one, ninety nine. Um, they all got a thousand dollar eight. Sorry, five hundred dollar single coat paint. With, with our perfect turf stickers on. So good. Looks good. Branded. God, looks um, so if anyone like fault looks at our Instagram page, you think we've grown overnight and that's it's been an Or we spend insane it's been that's five years spending of, smart. Yeah, it's been smart. five years of, of tears mm-hmm. all the time. Um blood, sweat and tears is is real. But um, you know, for us it's just been it's been our growth. And and within the this year especially, you know, you've got your inflation and all that jazz. Um but for me it's it's been growth. Um, I, I want to grow this business. I've have, I have a vision. I've mm-hmm. got my vision mm-hmm. up here. Um, mm-hmm. Got binders of, you know, my three to five year game plan. Mm-hmm. I even got diagrams of what I want this place to look Love like. Love it. Um, so, uh, but w- within that, it takes a lot of cash. So, in in this business, you know, it's it's uh, your your main your main cost is labor essentially, especially for us. It's yeah, definitely main main cost. Uh, and then. <clears throat> Every single day, it's like a, it's every day is a grind mm-hmm. to make sure you're hitting your goals. Your your labor costs are where they need to be at. Your percentages are where they need to be at. Um, it's just it's tough. It's it it's really tough. It is. Um, you said something earlier that I kind of like to wrap up our final thoughts with. You said you were talking like early on how you got this going and that going, and it's hard to get them all aligned through a process, you right? Because you got lawn fur, you got mowing, you got seasons, you got got a trim here christmas lights Hard specifically skate. here yeah just like seasonality i think that that's the why the industry is it simple absolutely is it really hard it's really hard because yep. there's so there, this is not a plug and play thing right you create a product in a business you sell that product and that's what you do you bet in our business, it's different crews do different things at different times with different people with no training yep. or little training or and oh, let's hope something doesn't break and take all our net profit for the day. Yeah, because our equipment costs. I was with Eric in, uh, from Fayark on Monday. Eric Hill, man, had eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars at twenty two years old in equipment. At least, yeah, that wasn't even mowers and like that was like equipment, equipment like trucks, trailers. Yeah. And, all. and he's tw- you know, it's like it takes a lot of equipment, dude. It does, and. It doesn't have to, you know, if, if someone's listening who has two crews and they're making three, four hundred grand, that's what you want to do. Hey, we are, su- we support you. And 100%. if you're net profiting, you know, 40, yeah, 25 to 40 oh percent, you're doing good. You gotta, you can have a guy that's doing four, four million, like you mentioned earlier, yeah. but his net profit could be one percent. Yep. Yeah, I mean, we, we were talking about it yesterday about the maintenance stuff. Um, one thing too is like, you know, I even shared this with you a long time ago, and I, re- I don't know where I read it at, but you can have a company doing 500,000. Doing twenty percent at profit, or, or a million, million doing ten. Company. You got, but the million you yes. got. Well, I'm, we're there. Way I mean, our, our net profits higher. Than, sure, but uh, the headaches you have at a million are different than five hundred thousand. Sure. It's like stages, but but yeah, it but is, to your point, yes, it is. So, anyways, to kind of wrap up, I think anyone listening, um, we, which you know, there's a, a good crowd that listens to 
podcast, and I think this one especially is going to have a big audience. If you're listening, make sure that you talk to someone about the struggles. This is the kind of thing I want to wrap up with. If you live in your own head about what you're struggling with, what do I do? You need a mentor. You need a community group. Um, you need, which we're going to have the Green Up Academy. We have a um, community group where you get part of the academy. Um, you need something to talk to. I remember there was there was one time. And I'm Corey Ballard. I'm not trying to plug him because he's Corey Ballard, but Corey has always been good to me. Always a, a good business mentor. I was at a basketball game, man, twenty early twenty twenty. And everyone's freaking out, right? And thankfully, we didn't have to lay anyone off. But I was struggling with overtime. And I'm at a basketball game and just realize I'm, again, trying to be present, but, like, yeah. how do I attack this overtime crisis I have? And I called court. I said, hey, can I call you? It was, like, 930 at night. And I stepped out to go to the bathroom and get a pretzel. I was like, hey, babe, I'm going to go step out go to the bathroom and get a pretzel. And I'm, like, trying to call Corey. You know, I didn't want to make my wife mad or whatever. And uh, I said, hey, man, can I get five minutes of your time? Help me understand the different ways I can pay for overtime. And Corey just answered, and he answered me, and it was it was so helpful. And I, that was when I officially confirmed. I had been doing four tens, but then, like, Fridays was also a work day, like, to give guys overtime. That's when I realized, like, they don't want – they want the money, but they don't want the overtime. Mm-hmm. You see – you understand the difference? Yeah. Like, they want the money of overtime, but they don't want to work. So I – I cut overtime except for, uh, not always. It's a long story. We'll talk about it in another episode on how to pay people and stuff. But this is when Corey gave me the advice. He's like, dude, they can't, mowing guys at 18 an hour at overtime rates, that's 27 an hour. They can't make you enough money on mowing on Fridays. Yeah, They're already at 40. So anyways, having him as a resource calmed my mind that night so much. And that's why I try to do that for people now. And so I just highly suggest get a business mentor. We're going to have coaches. We have coaches through the academy. You can have, you know, all that stuff. Um, but make sure you, when uh, through all these hard times, make sure you've got somebody. So, Trey, thank you for chatting with me, buddy. Yeah. Love you, man. And uh, this is the Green Up Academy where green industry pros come to level up. Please make sure you give us a five-star review, Facebook, all that stuff. Go to the g- academy. Uh Go greenupacademy.com. Is that right, Logan? Go greenupacademy.com, right? The greenupacademy.com. Sorry. The greenupacademy.com. And um, make sure you sign up. We're doing uh, a pre- uh, pre sale right now, and we think it's going to help a lot of people. So thank you, Trey, you and uh, see y'all next time.